Hey everyone, my name is Omri Hurwitz. I work in paid media for Wadi Digital. We're a technology marketing company, and this is my five minute podcast show. No small talk, no bullshit, just interesting questions that lead to fascinating answers. Today I've got the great Dol Globerman. If you haven't seen him on TV, you haven't seen TV at all. Dol is a journalist, tech expert, musician, and of course, a TV show host. So, Dol, for the people who don't know you, feel free to introduce yourself. Um, so what I like to do is to uh, bridge gaps between the common people and the innovation community. So I think mainly I help the uh, common people um, to get in touch with the innovation conversation and, and understand how it really affects their lives. Um, um, and sometimes I also help my uh, friend entrepreneurs to understand how the uh, common people sees them or how it affects their lives as well. Um, so I do that, uh, as you said, via hosting uh, a nightly television show about innovation. And no, it's not, it's not a regular gadget show you would imagine, but it is in fact a, a show that asks the same question every night, how innovation changes our lives. Mm -hmm. And the answer varies to many fields. It could be in relationship, in uh, parenting, in transportation, health, food, education, everything. Uh, and sometimes we would even show like the new iPhone, but that, that's not the main course. Um, and as you understand, these days, the answers are fascinating. That is amazing. So you've been covering technology for quite some time. What got you hooked up in the first place? Um, actually, it was everything except for technology. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's over 20 years now uh, that I started uh, doing that. It was Marif Daily Newspaper. And I, start, I joined in November 99. Okay. Wow. Two months after I joined, bug year 2000. You remember that? Uh, uh, yeah. Like the world. I was too young, but yeah. You were too young, but <laughs> every everybody thought that computers are going to ruin the world, and there was like major headlines. And I was I was less than 22 years old myself. And I was like in the center of all the storm as a journalist. Shit. It was super super amazing. Then three months after that, the dot, dot com bubble crashed in in Nasdaq. There was again amazing storm that is happening, and then 9/11 uh, and lots of stuff that really, I mean, sparked my early day uh, career. But you know, when I thought I'm getting bored with just being the computers reporter, as it was called back then, mm -hmm. um, I noticed I started getting those weird calls, okay, from managing editors in my newspaper, and it was like, uh, "We need you to draft a report about a military issue." What? And then we need you to draft a report about some, some health story over there. And I'm like, why are you calling me? I mean, you have a great military correspondent. Ask them. And they'll be <laughs> like, no, but it's on the internet and they have no idea how to access it. It was 99, year 2000. People didn't log on on a daily, uh, as a daily habit yet. And they had me to do those stuff. And then I realized that the story I want to tell is not in the technology. It's about how technology itself changes the lives of people in many aspects. And that's the thing I'm doing today, uh, uh, both in Keshet and also in Galei Tzal, which mm -hmm. is national, national uh, radio in Israel, and in Mako, uh, one of the largest websites. Um, and it's, it's still, you know, still, uh, I find it still interesting. You, you speak a lot about how we're all getting addicted to our phones, to social media, to the digital platforms. Is there anything we can do about it? Um, Funny, this, this, this question, I could answer like that if we were uh, two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. But now the answer got, got tricky, right? Hmm. Because, I mean, I, I can tell you, yo, man, leave the screen alone, log off Facebook, <laughs> right? I mean, because this is life now. Yeah. Um, and so this is, where the, this is where the thing gets very, um, the, the line is very fine. The mm -hmm. line between when is this machine, the network, the screen, when is it serving me and when I'm serving it. And it mm -hmm. could be just, you know, you scroll another story in your feed and boom, the computer is working for you now. It's super productive. It, I mean, it's worth your time. And then the next story, the next piece of data right below it, you're wasting your time. You're just getting hooked, Definitely. getting addicted, right? And, and we have to develop this sense to be much more uh, sharp. Yeah, uh, and at what is serving my time well and what is wasting my time because it's so hard to distinguish. But yet 
this is the time when you must be super sharp about it. <laughs> Firstly, because you're uh, uh, sitting uh, in front of a screen 24 seven, right? Doing mm -hmm. everything. Uh, we're working, socializing, uh, practicing, uh, uh, entertaining ourselves, doing everything by shopping in, uh, in front of those screens. Um, and secondly, if you still want to survive in this brutal uh, market, you need to be productive. You need to be focused and don't let uh, right, a useless feed steal your time and attention. And, and man, I didn't, I mean, I didn't solve it. I'm still struggling. It's the same struggle that I, I uh, have every day. Um, and this is life now. <laughs> well, the, the thing I do that helps me a lot is I put a timer. I, I'm like, if I go like to Instagram or LinkedIn or, or whatever, I'm like, I put a 30 minute timer and that's it. After 30 minutes, I'm not allowed to be on the, on the app anymore. That's it. But, that, but this is, uh, yo, but this is part of your, your job. I mean, being I know. on LinkedIn, right? It's something you do for a living. Exactly. That's, that's funny. So you, you got to balance it because then you're just going to, so, so when, when I am on LinkedIn, I know I'm working, I'm in work mode. I'm not on, I'm not right. on like, I'm not going to see other people, whatever they do. I I'm very concentrated on, on putting my content doing what I do to like, to grow up my business and everything. But yeah. you're right. The minute, the minute, the minute I, um, I don't pay attention to it. I, you can exactly. get dragged to, like to other stuff completely. You, it, I think the word maybe is intentive right? Exactly. You have to have intention in what you do. The minute you lose it, that's it. Somebody going to drag your attention somewhere. This, by the way, this is my tool. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Nice. This, uh, uh, right? A written uh, to-do list on paper, not on the screen. On not paper. on your iPhone. Not on my iPhone. It doesn't oh. work. <laughs> you know why? Because the minute, right? The minute I, I, I open it to look what I'm supposed to do next, it will tell me what it thinks I'm so, supposed to do next, right? With all those red dots. This is the plan that iPhone has for me. No, no. I'd rather manage my time and not let, have, let it manage mine. <laughs> you, you, live, you live by your own agenda, not the, not the technology's agenda, not the platform's agenda. Right. This is the, exactly the way I see it. I mean, I have my agenda for today, for the world, what I want to achieve. And the world, I mean, this has its own agenda for me, what it wants me to achieve for it. Okay. And this is the thing I'm not willing to do. Don't worry. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a regular person. I fall in the same pitfalls every day and I struggle to uh, grab myself out of it, out of it. That's amazing. Um, how do you think the tech industry has been affected by the coronavirus? I know we talked a little bit about it right now, but do you think we're going to see like major effects on how, how we're going to live differently? Honestly, honestly, I think it's too early to say, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm hearing few stories in this perspective, okay? One is that like every other industry, income decreases, volatility increases. So therefore you as an entrepreneur should like shut down your spending, shrink as much as you can, lay people off. Mm -hmm. Second story, the situation doesn't really affect the high tech uh, industry. Uh, so why not take the advantage and just lower salaries and get rid of people, although you don't really have to, okay? Mm -hmm. Third story, push forward. This is a time to develop and run and to the market as quickly as you can. Um, uh, prices going down, you should take advantage of that. Uh, there's, there's some simili similarity between those stories, but it's different agenda. And another story is that the high tech industry will just save us. I mean, globally and local, locally in Israel, right? I mean, in this perspective, we expect the high tech industry to be less affected. Uh, because people can work from home. Uh, and in Israel, the high tech often dubbed as the locomotive of the economy. Did you hear this expression? No, it, I did not. It's, so it's like the uh, piece of the economy that drags the entire train of economy, of Israel economy, uh, up and forward. Uh, so, so this is exactly the time for this economy to start dragging us all out of the mud, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. And, and we, we could be looking at innovation in, in some other ways. I mean, both for high tech and non high tech, we all need to still do business and bring value, but doing in different or new business models. Now the high tech is very much used to that, but other areas aren't. Maybe we could bridge and, and let high tech people help non high tech people hmm. develop those business models because they're so used to thinking in this way. And by the way, there's a beautiful initiative by the newspaper Globes that is doing that, just that. Uh, people are volunteering, people from the high tech and business industry are volunteering to help everyone 
to reinvent themselves and develop their uh, business models in order so they could be you know still make a living in this uh in this era i think mm-hmm. it's beautiful i hope it will help um just just to to make myself clear what i what i mean by uh, inventing new business models okay so if you're a fingernail um uh, artist mm-hmm. okay uh not an artist uh, you know, a manicure you manicure pedicure um, exactly. you're working exactly. cosmetics thank you uh so your clinic is probably closed now and you cannot maybe you cannot uh take care of all the people you used to just some of them uh but you can still serve the others from afar maybe by uh, uh sending them products that they need maybe by teaching them how to serve themselves through video and 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 you can be making money with that or you could just be uh uh be in touch with your customers and 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 hold this community together until things are back mm-hmm. um so there's a lot of lots of uh, uh logic into that the one of the bars i like in tel aviv they are selling you drinks for the future really and people are buying yeah People are buying 20 beers for whenever things are back. So in this way, the bar can survive this time and still keep in touch with its community and have people, you know, flock and drink the stuff when, they're, uh, when things are back. And people are actually buying the beers? Uh, ten, ten, tens of thousands of shekels wow. have already be spent, been spent. But it, it's not just a regular bar. It's what they call the Minzar, which is like, a, it's an institution. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but still people are happy to you know to feel part of this community uh, and they're willing to pay just you know for the uh, imagination of me sitting in a bar drinking my beer That's <laughs> right I mean I don't have that anymore in my life and I need <laughs> that I need to feel the people around me and this also type of service I'm, I'm, I'm getting and I will eventually drink this beer I'm not Do you think, do you think the, diff, the TV industry is going gonna, is gonna to change in some way? This is very interesting. Um, I mean, we are seeing uh, ratings uh, skyrocketing naturally mm-hmm. in, in these few weeks. Uh, people are tuning into uh, to the television and moreover, I think some of their um, trust in media and journalism, some of it is restored now. Uh, mm. uh, I, I saw polls that are showing that people trust journalism and journalists and uh tv journalism more than ever uh and they trust it more than they trust their friends on social networks and sometimes even more than they trust the government uh and i think they are it's right uh on the other hand the business is broken it's broken what do you and mean by that i mean that the fact that people are uh logging on to television channels for hours a day Uh, is not compensating for the loss of income due to the economy uh, downfall mm-hmm. and so it's again it's hard to tell what's uh, what's coming because if this situation is finished in the near future and people still have some of this trust and habit of watching television uh, then and and money is flowing back then television might be gaining some income and traction. Mm-hmm. but if if the situation lasts longer i mean the economy uh is still is still bad uh then things wah, would be mm. would be pretty bad for everyone uh, also in this industry so how do you a little bit on a different subject how do you spend your time how do you spend your time at home do you watch any netflix good question uh barely almost nothing uh i i barely watch television actually um i have two kids uh i'm taking care of uh they might storm in <laughs> not i was trying to balance you know to balance and and create some rules house rules house new new house rules yeah uh so before we started this conversation i told them girlies that is going in the room now in the office you cannot interfere <laughs> and crossing my fingers that it would hold um I have my, my work has changed or has changed uh, dramatically actually I was uh, so I, I told you I have my nightly uh, television show and I was working on three documentary movies uh, there are the uh, sequels of one I already made the battle on your mind that was uh, aired, uh, that's an amazing one. one oh you watched it amazing um, 
so so uh, I've been working on three sequels. Uh, they were all paused naturally. My daily program uh, was is also paused because uh, everybody is just broadcasting news all the time. Yeah. And, um, so so I find myself uh, giving commentary uh, on television on shows that didn't exist a few weeks ago. Um, and in fact, doing what I just told you with the bar and the cosmetics, mm-hmm. I'm doing the same myself. Um, I'm developing my own uh, video formats for Facebook and for LinkedIn. Uh, and I've been sending it to the world and see what happens and just, you know, teach. Uh, a learning from experience, learning by doing. I do it myself. Uh, I used to give tons of lectures and host events, live events, all gone now. Yeah. So I'm doing that now via Zoom. And that's, you know, the, the people that think that you just take your product, take your lecture and put it on video, it doesn't work. You need to reconstruct everything from scratch. And this, wow. is, this is exactly what I do here. Uh, it's amazing, by the way. I mean, it's hard. Uh, it might be might be frightening, but I'm so uh, curious. It's it's so interesting what's going on that I I just don't find time to be fearful. Seriously, uh, yeah. I remember it was night. I had one night. There was one night that was a little bit down. Maybe mm-hmm. something is wrong with me. I was a little <laughs> bit down one night, and all the rest of the time, although you know, I lost most of my income. I lost it, <laughs> uh, but. But it's so interesting to see what's happening and the huge digital leap that we're facing in so many fronts in education and health, everywhere in social services, everything is leaping forward into the future like that instantly. So I find that amazing and I'm also optimistic, seriously. Uh, me too, man. And I, I really think that you're doing a good job in like getting into LinkedIn and stuff. That's how I saw you. I started seeing what Gold Globerman is on LinkedIn now. You see, yeah, that's yeah. like, that's like, that's amazing, you know? and and. And like LinkedIn, that's where all the people are, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, the social media. And I think you're going to have a lot of success with it. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, I invite everyone to watch naturally and tell <laughs> me what they think because no, it was, was like real, um, a, a stronger dose of humility. I know my shit when I'm on television. LinkedIn <laughs> or social networks is a different story. I'm it new is. here. Uh, it is. So I'm a student and I'm happy with it. It's great to learn. Seriously. Yeah, and 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 it's 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 a it's a great point you said because because every media it's like its own different animal that you need to learn how it works, how the algorithm works, and 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 when you start like learning about it, um, you can really start growing your business on that platform. Right. Um, uh, <laughs> I want to tell you that my, my um, I have some advisors. One of them is my partner, my wife, uh, and and she's um. She's great on LinkedIn, and I, I'm hearing her voice smashing me for saying I know my shit. I said the word shit, and she's like, uh, yeah, you're not allowed to say shit on LinkedIn. You, yeah, you can say that on Facebook. On Perhaps Instagram, on Facebook. it will work. And Instagram is okay, not on LinkedIn. Uh, and and I, I have this argument with her. I mean, I tell her, listen, people are still people, even if they're on LinkedIn, they still have emotions. They still want to be interested. They still, I mean, they. It doesn't, it doesn't change so much. And, and what, what do you think? I believe you need to be authentic. Authentic. On every platform. Don't care about the rules, nothing. Just do what you do. I'll tell her you said that. Tell her. It's, it's amazing. So I've got one, uh, one last question for you. Sure. Uh, what advice would you give someone who wants to become a journalist? Oh, so <laughs> my answer don't is do say it. don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And, and uh, I'll elaborate a little bit. It's a very perplexing time to be a journalist because um, I think never, we've never been in a, uh, in a time in history where the need is so high mm-hmm. for people who do honest and professional work on data and on news and on what's going on. We need it, okay, as a community. Uh, fake news, lies, uh, all that. So we need people who know what they're doing. On the other hand, the business model is broken. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, both in income and both uh, and in uh, 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 how stable your career is. Mm-hmm. So, and and uh, I mean this it doesn't match, right? If the world needs it so much, then one, why can't I be paid well and feel confident in that area? So this is how it works. Uh, you know, it's, it's the internet, it's Google, it's Facebook, it's a social network that changed the model. And, and a new one was, is yet to be found. 
Um, and still, it's, I mean, to feel needed, to feel like the world needs your service, it's an amazing feeling. Um, and here are two things you need to consider too. Uh, first, you need to have lots of conscience and use it wisely, wisely. And second, uh, you must stay curious and learn like crazy all the time, mm. both about your area of specialty as a journalist and both about the profession of journalism itself as it changes all the time, right? I told you, I'm, I'm, I'm studying LinkedIn now. And, um, and if you're willing, you, so it's, it's, it's a crazy ride. And if you're willing to take it, come along. Right? It's not for everyone. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, Drol, thank you so much for being a, a guest here on the show. Um, thank you so I really, much for having me, Omri. Good luck. Yeah, I really admire you, and I think you're a very fascinating person. And just, thank like, thanks a lot, man, and, and good luck to all of us. And stay safe out there. Yeah, and stay home. Stay home. Bye-bye.